Early this year, the struggles of those who live on the street came into the forefront in Kansas City. Yeah, you'll recall two men died out in the cold. There were protests, a makeshift shelter, and a hotel program. Then city leaders formed a houseless task force. In this To America's report, we hear from one man and the homeless population to show you the America you know and the one you may not. The saying goes, before you judge someone, walk a mile in their shoes. Makes me feel uh, unwanted, like I'm um, pretty much like a second class citizen, really. James is houseless. He calls this corner at Admiral and the Paseo in Kansas City home. We got uh, displaced from uh, another spot and we're told by individuals that uh, we'd be uh, okay here. Going from here to there is a constant challenge. In 2021 alone, this community has gone from tents on the lawn at City Hall to a temporary shelter downtown. We didn't want to just put money in Barter Hall to pull people from a, a provider, a shelter provider that was already established. Well, what we found out is that we did actually do that. Then the city put $2.5 million toward a temporary hotel program. We got a lot of people off the streets for that 90 days, but ultimately that's what we did is we got people off the streets for 90 days. Fifth District Council Member Raina Parkshaw chairs the city's houseless task force. We asked about the varying programs and how effective they've been over the last year. I think we were just reacting and trying to come up with a way to help individuals. Dun, 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 dun. So this where it all happens. This is a woman who helps. My name is Bridget, Bridget Brown. And boy, has she walked a mile in her client's shoes. That gives me more insight and obviously empathy for their situations. I, I can relate to it from when, it, when I had been homeless years ago. Now, she's all about the suds, brightening more than the laundry of the hundreds who come to Hope Faith Ministries. Just play a part my role, yeah. because everyone deserves dignity. That's just the way it is. Why is dignity so important? I mean, dignity, respect, you know, don't just look down on someone for no reason, and you don't know their story and how they got there. Beyond the barricades, the brick walls, and the chain link fence, the numbers are troubling. The United States Interagency Council on Homelessness estimates 2,449 people are houseless in Kansas and 6,527 people are houseless in Missouri. I think the most heartbreaking thing is that uh, there's a disconnect between the general public and the actual amount of people that are out there. I really believe that it's hard to count whenever we're shuffling people around. I mean, we just had a camp across the street that was asked to vacate today, and so it's hard to keep tabs. That camp is where James lived. I can't tell you how, um, how disheartening this is. In this next uh, 48 hours or whatever we have, we, we have to not only pack, but uh, find a place to go, find out how we're going to get our stuff from this site, you know, to the new site. We got to worry about uh, if this new site is uh, going to be safe and how long we're going to be there. This will be his sixth move this year. They were actually pretty stable. Uh, is it ideal? Not necessarily, but they were stable and they were very close to resources. A block and a half from Hope Faith Ministries, where Bridget does laundry, professional stylists offer haircuts, there's free transportation throughout the metro, and physical and mental health support for free. Every time we uh, get moved, a little piece of what we've uh, gathered gets misplaced somehow, some way. Last month, the Houseless Task Force unveiled outreach teams dedicated to meeting the houseless where they are. Part of its plan is supporting existing shelters, too. We asked them what's their number one issue, what's their number one challenge. They all said staffing. Good morning. Park Shaw says $650,000 will be used to increase staff and expand capacity whenever it's needed. Oftentimes, everybody looks to the city, like, why isn't the city doing more? Why isn't the city doing more? Um, and really, it's the community that could step up. So I think if we can engage the, with them, the people that we're trying to serve, uh, that's a big deal. Like, it's a big, big deal. Um, we miss that, you know? Like, the people we serve miss that. After all, James just hopes walking in his shoes will get a little bit easier. I just want to be considered. That, that's, that's perfect right there. Just be considered. 
I mean, I'm, I'm part of Kansas City too. Local housing providers have offered 70 units to meet the needs of the houseless right now. The task force just unveiled a system to track where beds are available electronically. That didn't exist before. Tomorrow, here at 6, I'm sharing more on how housing providers are hoping to be part of the solution for the houseless and those who are most impacted by COVID.